Super Mario, etc. We're going to start out with a visit to the Western Regional Nintendo Finals held recently here in Oakland, California. It was a dream come true for die-hard Nintendo fans. Over 10,000 of them packed the Oakland Coliseum when the Nintendo World Championships rolled in as part of a nine-month traveling extravaganza. The Nintendo World Championships, its first year out, was really a, an idea that's been conceptualized about two years ago, brought out by demand of the players themselves, who seem to be socially interactive. They want to know who the best are they're playing against with their families, with their peers, their friends. This is a way to bring Nintendo out of the house and into a show and really give those kids a spotlight that they deserve. The players were divided into three age groups and competed in Super Mario Brothers, Tetris and Rad Racer. The winner with the highest combined score earned a spot in the finals in Hollywood and perhaps a shot at electronic stardom. The three-day event also featured a power walk that highlighted brand new Nintendo games not yet on the market. Game counselors were also on hand to give tips to kids on improving their game skills. Such innovative marketing has helped keep Nintendo on top. The keys of the success of Nintendo is the fact that they're always ahead of the market. In other words, they're always introducing new games from some of the hottest movies, some of the latest trends. They're always keeping one step ahead of everybody. Figures from Nintendo show it expects to sell fewer units of its entertainment system this year. But by the year end, Nintendo also expects to have a place in nearly 30% of all U.S. households. The company's success clearly lies in churning out the popular software titles to run on those machines. I think the uh, success of Nintendo will go on forever, really indefinite, because it's like having a VCR in your home. Once you have the hardware, you have this choice of software. There's some over 450 games now, and with the Game Boy, there's some 700 games out there. So the choice will always continue uh, once you have the game in your home. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy. まず in addition, they used a grainy filter to dirty the images while giving them character. Here's what Silent Hill 2 would have looked like if its creators had not used this ingenious process. Always trying to take us by surprise, the graphics designers had fun planting a few disturbing elements throughout the game go unnoticed at first. For instance, there's that body in front of the television. You don't realize it, but you know that face. Another image from James's brain, that dress on the tailor's dummy holding the flashlight. You've seen that dress before. It's Mary's. All of these mysterious details come together to form a visual background ideal for conveying impressions of solitude, suggesting a parallel dimension, the perfect substrate for showcasing such elaborate and ambiguous characters. Hey everybody, how's it going you guys? What's up, Fernies? I'm doing okay? Oh wait, I need to, hold on. Can I mute this business? Might need to check volume levels. That game is to be audible. You know, somebody worked really hard making these sound effects, making the soundtrack. God damn it, it ought to be audible. What's up, Red Attack? Welcome back, man. What's up, Angry Spartan? Hey, Rymore. When will that bug driving video come out? Bug driving video. Bug driving video. Bug driving video. I don't know what you're talking about. Bug driving video. WDF pay per view video? That I'm not sure about. Uh. I could, I could check, but I want to get into this shit, so. What's up, fish balls? Hello, architecture in... 
Architecture in Tokyo? Or Architecture in Tokyo. That is a great name. What's up, Wicker Man? I'm actually a little, uh, I'm a little tired right now. I'm a little groovy. I'm, uh, I'm feeling, feeling chill. I worked out today. Had a long day of work. I say work. It's never, it's never really work. But, uh, now I'm playing this. This game have lollies or I'm out? Uh, I guess you could, yeah? They're not very moe, though. It's got tiny people, so in that regard, per yes, it does have moe. Shad Sparks, you've been playing Skyrim? Man, I, I just never could catch the fever there. I just, Skyrim didn't work for me. It's like Limbo, it's very similar to Limbo. Uh, but I think it's actually better. I think it's a little bit better than Limbo, it's better than outside. The, it's a weird problem, right, to not be a first mover in, in an indie space? Whoa, that will kill you, by the way. Will you be playing more Persona 5? Yes, Angry Spartan, I absolutely will. I actually thought about playing it today, but I wanted to see if I could either finish up or put, put a dent in uh, Little Monsters. Nope, Little Nightmares. Little Monsters is different. It's a different thing. That is different. So yeah, I really like this game. It's got, um... Oh, hold on. Some this controller does this. Just starts vibrating and won't fucking stop. Weird bug with Xbox controllers. Also, this is like an Xbox One launch edition controller, so it's got its quirks, for sure. Oh, thank you, Devil Dan. 16 months reset. Appreciate that. I will keep being awesome. Which is to say, I'll keep doing exactly what I'm doing, because apparently that qualifies as awesome. Coleman, played any more Prey? I did, actually. I put some time in on it last night. Um, I got... Let me think. Where am I headed? Um, I'm not in Psychotronics yet. I think I'm going to Psychotronics right now. Um, it was kind of cool. Actually, I leapfrogged an objective. Uh, but yeah. Oh, fuck. Fuck me. That thing. Brought Strafe after watching you play. It's a great game to play in short bursts. Yeah. That's kind of how I figured I would, I would play it. Is I'll put in a couple of matches here and there. I'll slowly get better at it. Over, like, an hour here, an hour there. Oh, shit. What are you reaching for, bro? Oh, he's pulling kids out of there. But an hour here, an hour there. I'll eventually get better at it. I'll learn the systems a little more. I'll, uh... Oh, fuck. He's gonna kill me. Ah. So he's deaf, I think. Don't... Don't drag it out. Uh. What's up, chocolate bunny cake? But yeah, Prey continues to be fucking awesome. Um, the more I play that game, the more that sort of rules out its uh, its mechanics. And the more I appreciate... I appreciate it? How well it's made? Okay, so he's... Fuck. So there's that squeaky board. Do I just have to walk around it? Or will it always... It always squeaks. Fuck. Fuck, man. Alright. Catalysts. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah. RCA. RCA Dolph. It's definitely, like, got that claymation kind of creepy uh, Tim burton -y vibe. For sure. The game's actually really beautiful. Like, the lighting effects are super good. The art design's awesome. How's the difficulty on Prey? Well, I'm playing it on hard. And it's, it's very hard. Um... We can smell you. Oh, well. Hmm. I'll try to figure that out. Sutton, hey. Thank you for the Prime sub. Nice to see you again. Uh, but yeah, Prey is interesting. I I thought I had basically gotten a handle on the difficulty. Like, I had figured out a routine that worked. Do I just have to fucking book it? I guess I do. Go in! Go in! Oh, wait. He can reach in cages. I knew that. They demonstrated that. Uh, but, yeah, so I thought I basically figured it out, but then all the enemies kind of jumped up a level, and now it's really tough again, so I think it's going to be that cycle. Like, I'll buy enough skills to sort of figure out the game's difficulty. I'll cruise for a while, stocking up health and, and food, and then the game will... I'll enter a new area with new enemies, and it'll just be fucking... It'll be trash. It'll be rough. So let me try this. Let me just crawl up here. 
I guess you just gotta outrun his ass. I figured there'd be some kind of puzzle. Alright. Oh yeah, it's a little salad fingers -y for sure. Oh shit, he's coming in. Sure about Hitman? Fishballs I did. That's a bummer. It seemed like it was such a good experiment. And I gotta admit, being part of the problem there, as much as as much as I've enjoyed past Hitman, I didn't I didn't dive into it because it was uh Oh shit. Because it was uh, episodic, I didn't really Fuck! Ugh! Ugh. Good thing all the shoes protected me. And pray in harder higher do you run out of bullets. You run out of bullets, you're screwed with the heavier enemies at least. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine taking down anything above uh not a mimic, but the walking around guys, the phantoms. I can't taking can't imagine taking out anything heftier than a phantom with the wrench only. What's up, Ops? Hey, it's been a while. But yeah. Do you usually prefer to play games on harder difficulties or only once in a while? Once in a while, RCA. Uh, I'll often start a game on hard and then bump it to normal if I if I get the sense that playing on hard doesn't mean anything. Um, and for a lot of games it doesn't. For a lot of games, it's like, playing on hard doesn't force you to play in a new way, or... Oh shit. Karen. Karen Kyra. You have fulfilled the necessities required to get a sub-hype song, and therefore you will. Because you came back. You That's a double-up Twitch, Twitch Prime sub. So, let me play a song for you now. Um, and I'll get I'll get back to my explanation of game difficulties in just a moment. In the meantime, Karen, please enjoy your track. Wait, yeah, it's good. Man, I swear, there's this whole subgenre of music, in which the cover art is inevitably a fractal of some kind, and it all sounds exactly like that. Uh, that's pretty good. What is that song called? So it's from a band called Slack, Slack Baba. And the name of the track is Fortean Thieves. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. F-O-R-T-E-A-N Thieves. From Slack Baba. Uh, but yeah, Dr. Eleven, you, you sort of hit on something that that I don't care for. The, the meaningless hard, where it's just like we gave enemies more health and have them do more damage. And some games, like some beat em ups I think are especially guilty of this if you have to beat it without getting hit anyway it doesn't matter what get, what difficulty you're playing on um so like what's what's Dark Souls on hard I don't know it's like maybe playing it you have to memorize the enemy patterns regardless it's about the number of mistakes you get to make maybe you get to make two maybe you get to make one but you still have to pretty much beat it without getting hit so I don't know to me to me, to think about variable difficulty in a game like that is kind of silly because the difficulty's been minimized by the design. Uh, and some games are like that. So for me, if if like if it doesn't change my ah oh, shit, if it doesn't change my experience, or or like the the sort of decision making I have to do while I'm playing, then there's no reason to play on hard. It's just going to take longer for the same same thing. But for me, playing on prey or playing prey on hard is different. I love I love that if you play on hard, suddenly. Every piece of, of food you pick up is important. Every piece of ammo you pick up is important. Every time you encounter an enemy is important. Because it's it's like survival horror. You have to sort of manage your resources and play efficiently. Fuck me, that's creepy. I haven't seen a game do difficulty better than, than in Resident Evil 7. So I actually haven't played that on hard. I intended to. Um, when, I, when I cozied up with 7, I was like, ooh, this is good. I'm going to play through this game a couple times. Hopefully there's like some creepy, some crazy ass extra ending where I can unlock a special character or something. But yeah, Dr. Lowen, yeah, I like Dark Souls for that. One difficulty, they made the game exactly how they wanted to be. One difficulty for everyone. Yeah, I agree. Theoretically, you can, you can customize your difficulty by like building your character in a certain way. And to a degree, that's true. But really, to me, it's like, it just changes the style of, style of, the style of the difficulty, you know? Are you playing a glass cannon where you have to keep away? Are you playing a, like an armor-clad knight where you have to stay close? Either way, you have to do you have to like dodge roll through stuff. But what do you have to dodge roll through? Either you have to memorize the boss's melee pattern, or you have to memorize their ranged pattern, or you have to know like the beginnings of the animations or the end of the like. There's so much cool stuff, and Dark Souls is pretty masterful about that. How one game can be three or four based on how you roll your character. But yeah, 
what I enjoy is a game like, I don't know, like DMC. Oh, or even Double May Cry 3. Like, in terms of, like, character action games, I think those did difficulty really well. Where... Oh, fuck off, dude. Shit. Oh, I'm gonna die here. He's got me, he's got me. Like, normal was essentially the game's tutorial. That taught you the bosses. Uh, and then hard is kind of like what felt like. Oh, fuck off, dude. What a. What's that? Yeah, he's gonna get me. Oh, shut up. What the fuck? What do I do? I just hope the AI cannot grab things off the side of the boxes. He can. Oh, fuck off, man. I gotta stay on an elevator with him. Max Payne had a good difficulty curve. The use of bullet time changes it completely. Yeah. Karen, that's a really good point. Or, uh, Karen Kyra, I hope I'm not slaughtering your name. But, uh, yeah, Max Payne did it really well, too. Where, on normal, it was like you just kind of get to have fun and play an interactive movie, and it keeps you honest some of the time. But on hard, it was like, no, you have to, you have to know. You have to kind of tr spend bullet time weighing the scene. Uh, so it's like, shit, man, there's like three, three enemies here. I kind of have to. I bet I have to crawl into that cage thing and then shut the door. This is gonna find me. Am I nervous about the Jumanji remake, Lionel? Not really. I actually haven't seen Jumanji, so it's not like it. Uh, it necessarily is something near and dear to my heart. Oh, what about Doom's Nightmare difficulty? So Nightmare difficulty, I, I feel totally fine with. I'm actually really enjoying playing through on Nightmare. Ultra Nightmare, I appreciate that it's in the game, but it's a little beyond me, I think. I, to me, my favorite, like, optional playing a game on a, on a hard, like, welcoming a hard challenge was uh, Dead Space 2. It had that, it had that mode where you had to run through the entire game on hard, and you got three saves, and that was it. But I like that because not only did you have to play the game smart, but then you had that metagame of, like, where do I save? Um, and there are sequences in that game that have instant death. So, I think it provided just enough of a safety net. Like, you didn't have to run the whole game in one sitting, but you did have to run a three-hour, four-hour stretch without dying. So I really appreciated that. To me, that was a good balance. Like, we're going to set something that is doable in front of you. You get to choose where your checkpoints go. Resonator, I did see that uh, Blade Runner trailer. It is, it is so beautiful. It's 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 fantastic. I, that's not a necessarily a movie I need to be good. Like I need to, but man, if it is good, that's just great. That's just fantastic. Hmm. Huh? You're finished watching Death Note, and are you looking forward to the new movie? Um, I can tell you, I'm not looking forward to the new movie. Possibly because I also never finished Death Note. I have to pull out blocks and stand them on the... The yeah, enzymatic plane dim indies. I don't know if this comes out as a super indie. Or... I mean, it's, it's like, real good. Shit, what do I do? Oh. Alright, that'll, that'll work. Why was that box there? Just a red herring, maybe? My name is pronounced uh, like Muslim Bubble Koran, but with a K instead of a Q. So, Koran, gotcha. I mean, I may even be slaughtering that, I'm not sure. Satan's account official, you're off for the night? Well, try not to damn any more souls, but you know what? Who am I to tell Satan what to do? God, this fucking heartbeat. He does have a spoon, he's got a rusty spoon. Stop tapping your spoon. Play your dolls around? Shit. The original is one, it, one of, if not my top favorite movies of all time, just because I'm a sci-fi nut. It's one of the things that spurred the passion. Just want it, and it looks stunning. Yeah. I agree. That I think Blade Runner is one of those movies you can't... You cannot reasonably find fault with. Uh, even the things that are kind of broken about it still, still work. I think those are like, those are collectibles. 
manga was good, but the anime was trash. I watched about half of it, and then I could kind of feel, I could feel it getting bad. I was like, eh, hey, I'm done. I'm done now. Now I am done. It doesn't take much for me to hit that, that point with a lot of shows. God, what am I doing here? <sighs> Adam, gamers are dead, it's true. Holzman, you talked to me on Twitter today? It's a good day. Fuck, man, what do I do? <sighs> Games were always bad. Shit. I can only figure I have to take this thing over here, but I don't know why. Maybe it lures the solid fingers? We're gonna figure this out. Huh. Can I pick it up while I'm crouched? I can't. of anime what am I watching um I've been dabbling I'm trying to trying to get through food wars the original uh, that's how far behind I am sweetness and lightning is always adorable um, I think I'm like episode four or five and then I got halfway through the first episode of my hero academia oh god those fucking fingers people say it's good um, seems pretty uh Seems like they just generified One Punch Man a bit, but Food Wars is awesome. How far did you watch Death Note? Up until the uh, I don't know her name, but when they started introducing the girl character, <laughs> I was like, no, thank you, not in my anime, not today. Rusty Crusader, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Oh yeah, Mr. Amazing, you're playing Grip. I played that. That's a really cool game. I like where they're going with that. Oh yeah, Croco no Basket. I need to watch that. Well, I don't know what to do. Do I have to have him come and stand on the broken plank? Is that the idea? Yeah. Clothes ripping food orgasms? That's pretty much all you need to know. Shh. Oh yeah. Shukigeki no Soma? Yeah. You, rec you told me to watch that before, right, Kala? Death Note makes you really tense. That's the whole idea, isn't it, B? This is a show about tension. What the shit? Oh, My Hero is great because it's made by people who grew up watching stuff like Naruto and One Piece. It's the ideal shonen. It's certainly shonen. You've got your childhood rivalry already. The you don't have this special thing that all the rest of us has downtrodden uh, hero. Oh, right, call it. Never mind. Somebody, I feel like somebody recommended that then. I feel like this has to. This thing has to be important, but it doesn't. Solid Fingers doesn't seem to be reacting to it at all. There's another monkey there. This would make more sense if I had a way to get back up, but it doesn't seem like I do. Oh wait, can I climb? Oh, there's a hole here. Alright then. Oh, he's coming. Okay, so I just use this down... I just use this place to see what he's up to so I can sneak by him. Oh, I got it now. Interviews with Monster Girls is worth a watch. Yeah, that whole thing has blown up, hasn't it? I, uh... I watched a couple episodes of Dragon Maid. I'd like to watch more of that. That's a weird-ass show. Uh... Never did it finish Monster Mizume. I need to do that. It's on my do-do. Can I get behind him? Let me see if I can... Maybe this will work. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. He's got really long arms, though. Oh, God, he's creeping up with it. Oh, fuck off! What? <sighs> Shit. God, he snatched me. Bleh. I haven't been keeping up with Attack on Titan, actually. The first, uh, the first season, I don't know. 
I'm concerned sometimes by uh, shows that that uh, the lifeblood of the show is the mystery of the setting. Like, what's going on in this world? What are the rules of the world? It's kind of the lost formula of we're going to have this world of mystery and not even... Like, the, the, point, the reason you keep watching is so we will maybe eventually explain what's going on. So, I hope that uh, Attack on Titan isn't like that. It seems like they're kind of dribbling out the rules of how Titans work and who can be a Titan. And now people can be Titans. And I just hope that it's not that. That they don't have to keep trickling out uh, lore to make it meaningful. Also, once they once they added in the whole like, oh, people become Titans, then it's like, okay, so you're just you're walking towards Battlestar Galactica now. Who's a Cylon? Are you a Cylon? Are you a Cylon? So it's just an, an again a never-ending narrative of of like suspicion, paranoia, and all that stuff, and, and that's fine. That's fine. I got nothing against it. Oh fuck off. There we go. Safe. Oh, wheelbarrow. You don't know whose idea it was for me to wear a top hat during the podcast, but it was amazing. That was my idea, good sir, my sir, my fellow sir. I wanted like a like a beanie or something, something a little more indie, but I figured that would work. Having caught up on the manga of Attack on Titan, it's basically Battlestar. You weren't too far off. I figured that's where it was going. Is there a music house about Awesome Mix Volume 2? Uh, no. We haven't gotten into music commentary yet. That'd be a hell of a thing. I don't know. I think there's something to be said for for sticking with your uh, your forte. That's oh, a clock. Because certainly, it seems like all, all gaming media tend trends to just like comic books and pop culture. I know, I know this website's called GameSpot, but we're gonna post about Star Wars all the time. And that's not... I'm not overtly throwing shade. I understand you do what you gotta do to get those hits. Fuck off, dude! Ow, oh, I got nowhere to hide. So... The struggle's real. If you gotta post about Game of Thrones to pay the bills, you do what you gotta do. Oh yeah, B, I hear you. Lost is one of my favorites. I find it funny. I watch it on Netflix so I didn't have to wait each week for the mystery. Yep. The rest of us did, which sucked. Hey DJ Blazer. What the fuck I don't Oh boy. Just grab me. Oh, he doesn't like the clocks? He's gonna snatch me up. He's gonna snatch me so hard. Oh man, you're gonna grab me. Oh shit. <sighs> sure. <laughs> oh. There's a magic spot to stand. Nope. <sighs> Can I not even? There we go. Man, I'm surprised. You gave me a break. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out. Oh, God. I gotta push the door. It's stuck a little bit. Eh? Alright. Someone who's asking you if there's a show that you think would be better if it were in space? I mean, not really. I'm not, I'm not attached to space just because space is cool. I mean, space is cool, don't get me wrong. And I do tend to, uh, like science fiction better than fantasy, but... You look so stupid with that weak throw. Yeah. Seven Deadly Sins on Netflix was really good. What's that all about? I'm not familiar with this show. Yeah! Mercy Dolph. By the way, Lawrence, just fucking love how you say shit. Thank you. Oh god, fucking shit, dog. Get out of here. I've been, uh... 
I've been paying paying a bit of passive mind to my fuck comedic elocution. Oh come on! You can't reach down here and get me, can you? Slaw Milt, welcome back. Dante says I finished my internship in Sydney and I'm applied to a summer internship at Funhouse. It's a long shot, but a shot. Take a step, second step into a career. Right on, man. Best of luck. Still miss the large talking heads on the no. Oh yeah. Oh, Shanzi. Yeah, that. So the uh, the like f shitty improv was a really curious curious bit. Um. I. I wonder how many people are familiar enough with improv to sort of appreciate the satire. That was sort of uh, a point Stephanie had brought up. Maybe people just don't know about improv and how crappy it is, or can be. Can he reach all the way up here? But I'm glad that you liked it. Kind of off topic, but did you look at the new Octane Memory Intel release last month? I did not, actually. You can. You can reach up here. Ugh. Man. No one told me this game has you literally dogged by salad fingers for a portion of it. It's fucked up. I think those are checkpoints. Improv is usually really funny or really shit. Yeah. Have you ever taken a film studies course? I have not. Nope. I, uh... I went to college for computer science. Oh. Okay. Well. Now you know exactly where I am. Figured I'd make it sporting. Shit. I don't know how much I can press this. So I'm gonna try. Alright, fuck it. See you later, homie. Why be satirical when you can be sarcastic? I don't know. Satire requires a bit more thought. Sarcasm is easy. At least that's, that's how it appears to me. It's not hard to look at to look at everyday things and go, Psh, get a load of this bullshit. That's easy. Everyone does that. But to uh, to say get a load of this bullshit in a manner that implies greater understanding and makes a point, well, that's something else. Sure. Is he gonna open the door now so I can sneak around behind him? Let's see here. Oh, freak of nature. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Implaf says I'm in an improv troupe. I can confirm it's very hit or miss. Ah, that's fine. I think improv improv is never gonna be 100% hits. I think it's all about your ratio. You have a pretty, it's kind of like being a major, like a baseball batter, or a, it's all about. Uh, your hit percentage, which can be low. Can I go through here? I can. Is this door open? It is. You're off, dudes. Got our block. I'm sorry to hear that. But, thanks for dropping in. Always great to hear from you. Herp! God, stop getting stuck! Ugh, I'm out of here. There. Now he can never get to me again. Rudy is my slave name. Alright. Or this game's pretty short. Why is your panda? I get the sense that it may be pretty short. Um, I think James and Elise beat it in a couple of sittings. But I don't really mind, you know? I don't mind shorter games. I don't mind games I can beat in a couple of evenings. There's no reason for a game to be long. For that reason. Robert, if you go to E3 this year, will you be able to meet us? I wouldn't bet on it. I don't know that we're even going. Um... We're definitely doing a thing at our office, but that's, you know, on the other side of town. My room looks like a nightmare. One behind me. I picked, uh... 
Atmospheric lighting for that very purpose. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, get back here. I don't think that's how Steam works. It is now. Yes, the E3 weekend. You gonna play Destiny 2? Sure, I'll check it out. I'll be I'll be pretty quick to bail out though if, if I get the sense that I've done what I want to do. This game has five missions. I guess that's divided by like stage or achievements or something. Thoughts on Spotify? Like, dislike, indifferent? Mostly indifferent. I use Google Play, so. Is the E3 thing at the office going to be one or two of the days, or will it be all three? It is all three. Yes, E3 Bender. Damn, Fisher. Thank you. Check out Drop Mix at E3 if possible. Sure. Sounds like my kind of game. I'm assuming it's like pu Puzzle Rhythm. Destiny was meh, fun gameplay loop, shallow, no longevity. Well, I think it had longevity based on how you played it. Rocking that episode three Anakin look. I'm so dark, so brooding. Ugh. Yeah, Resonator, we are we are doing drunk three again. I will announce all the details shortly. I'm just waiting for certain things to get firmed up. Basically, we're we have our Oh boy. Oh. Christ. We have preliminary plans and now we're just sort of thinking through everything, what it means, what it oh, look at this fucker. Just trying to work, think through all uh, all potential problems before they become problems, and uh, the the last thing I ever want to do is announce something that ends up not happening for whatever reason. Oh shit! I don't want to get people's hopes up and then have to change it or or like retract anything. So we're just sort of feeling everything out, and making sure it's on level. That really needs to clamp shut. If that could close, that'd be great. Shit. Salad fingers are getting creepy. What do I do? Where do I go? Damn it. Do I have to, like, grab and pull the box? Shit! Ah, he got me. Huh. <sighs> I know, but now there's always Photoshop's, uh, that have the faces of the members. How many pics do you have of them, and where do you get them? I think we make them. Either find them on... Crop them out of out of uh, out of other videos or one thing we've been trying to do is amass like a head a headshot gallery so those can be pre-cut out and used. Fuck. Huh. <sighs> Yo, is this a spook game? Horatio, it's it's more creepy than than scary. It's unsettling, but it's not scary. A moment of realization when he touched it was pretty awesomely animated. Yeah, right? They're like, <gasps> and then the grab. Ugh. So I don't know what I'm supposed to. There we go. Okay. I gotta do this multiple times, don't I? Sure. Sure. I love how this game looks. Yeah. The... It's actually really good looking. I mean, apart from the artistic styling of it. Come on, grab it. Shit! Alright. Oh! Woo! Oh, god, they're jittering. Fuck off! Ugh. Oh. Kick it around a little bit. Fuck. <sighs> Gnarly. Yeah, they're all noodly. That's a good word for what they are. The Octane Memory has speed faster than DDR4 RAM on round level 3 cache, and it sustains all the information after it's been turned off. Shit. Alright, that's pretty legit. Stuff like that means that, like, load times just won't happen soon. The most you'll have to wait for is buffering, or, like, uh, latency. That's it. And that means either within your, your own machine, or, uh, or being streamed from wherever your machine is. Spaghetti arms. She's got a tiny little lighter. Super cute. Oh, the sound effects of the water hitting her thing. It's only 40 bucks? Wait, what? 
For how much storage? Something like that would, I think, revolutionize mobile computing. The fact that you can have that much storage that's that fast. I imagine it's got to be pretty small, too, since it's not mechanical. Or is it mechanical? Holy shit. What's going on here? I'm guessing the reduced sort of the villain of this stage. Chef guy. Ugh. Drinking straight grain alcohol in, a, in ice cubes. Man, I wish. If it were Friday, maybe. Nope. Uh, just water. Water and ice. Oh yeah, she's sick or something. I always, I think it's a she, but I guess it could say gendered. Um, usually when that happens, she has to eat something. And it's usually something pretty gross. Like that rat. Simmon, which you could stick around to the end. I gotta be, I gotta be honest, I'm probably not gonna be streaming for way too much longer. Um, I'm gonna have to eat a rat out of a rat trap. I'm feeling pretty chill. I went to the gym today. I already said that. Aww. It's not mechanical, it's cheap because it's only 30 gigabytes. I think they'll release something bigger next year. Okay. Maybe the protagonist is genderless. Yes, I think that's... That's the intent. <sighs> Something seemed uh, rather feminine about the look, grunts and efforts that you hear, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, dang, little dude. Yeah. That's the appropriate response. Dang. Dang, little guy. I'm good now. Yeah, everything's fine. Push this over. This isn't even the worst of it. Babs, I assume you played it then? It's a ring coat with legs. Yeah, it's weird because there are a couple of times where it's pretty obvious you're in a human sized world, but you're super tiny. Have you started watching Sense8 Season 2? It's a little cheesy. No, I haven't made it through Season 1 yet. Oh, thank you, Carmine. Really enjoyed that, that sketch you did. It was really cute. It gets much worse. Good. I suppose it could also be swung as childlike voices are often mistaken as female. Yeah? If they really wanted to push the genderless agenda. I don't know that there's much of an agenda going on. I think that they just, you know... Why put a pin in something you don't have to put a pin in? What's the premise of this game? Uh... Boss, you're basically you're looking at it. There's not much explanation beyond this. You wake up as a little raincoat person, and you gotta go right. And there's a lot of creepy shit between you and going right. <laughs> this is usually how it works. It's like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids met Tom Burton. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good summary of what's going on here. It's pretty, uh... Pretty basic puzzle. Fuck. Raincoat killer? Kala, have you played uh, Deadly Premonition? Why put a penis where poop comes out? These are questions that need answers. It's true, Julian. Just asking questions. Questions that need answers. Seems like you're on a boat. I'm like a fall small fisherman or sailor. Yeah, you do kind of have a fisherman, like, Van de Camp's raincoat. Fuck his face, man. He's gonna turn around, he's gonna see me. He squealed. Fair enough, what is your takeaway from it so far? What do you think the point is behind it all? Uh, Bass, I'm, I'm not sure that there's a whole, there's really a deep meaning here. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm, I'm pretty cool with it just being a... It's like a puzzle platformer. With a really strong art style and really good visuals. That's enough for me. Can he hear? What is this? Nope. Oh, okay. 
I guess these are the rooms where they teach you the, uh... The rules. Your ham's burning, bro. Deal with that shit. We played inside. Yeah, Enzymatic, I did. Actually, I, I think I was, like, at home... I was at home for some reason. I think I was sick. I was taking a day off of, like, we, we had a really long weekend, and I had, I had the sniffles. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay home. I'm, I'm beat. Um, since Bruce is awesome, he's like, yeah, man, take your time. So I just stayed home, and I think... I'm pretty sure I played through inside in just, like, one sitting. Um, it was pretty great. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it as much as... Oh, fuck. Didn't enjoy it quite as much as Limbo. But, s still for me, um... I, I'm liking this better than Limbo or Inside. Oh, shit. There's a key in here somewhere. What if I just grab it? Nope. Alright. This boss kind of reminds me of Pig from Arkham Knight. so less sadistic. Yeah. What did you... I don't remember a whole lot of boss fights from Arkham Knight. Except for the one that kept fucking up. Like, the, the QT wouldn't pop up. Uh, what did you think of the ending of Inside? Karan, I... I didn't care for it. So, Limbo had a cool ending. Limbo kind of implied a lot of context to the game. Like, it, it sort of gave a lot of the, uh... Depending on how you interpret it, of course, but to me it gave a lot of the, um... Abstractness of the game a lot of meaning, suddenly. And I appreciated that. I appreciated, like, hitting the ending and then recalling everything in the game and sort of... Thinking about what it meant and this new context and all that sort of stuff. The ending of Inside didn't really do that. There's stuff that I could interpret, like if I were trying to be generous about it, but I don't think it really... What? Really? To me, it didn't necessarily... Uh... So you just can't see up here? Can't reach up here? God, he's making little pig noises? Fuck. But yeah, I guess, I guess based on the ending of Limbo, I was hoping for something that would sort of cast cast a new context on the rest of the game, or, or give me something to think about, and it didn't really do that. Um, but, you know, it was still a fun game. I even got, the, like, this the bonus ending or whatever, and it still didn't give a whole lot of food for thought. Is What Remains of Edith Finch similar to Gone Home and Firewatch? Yes, very similar. But I think it's a mark above both those games. Uh, so Gone Home had cool, like, exploration elements. Oh, fuck. Um... And, and a decent, like, a, I would say a good narrative. I enjoyed it. Uh, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, and I appreciated that. Uh, whereas Firewatch had, like, really good writing and solid solid performances, solid voicing. I think What Remains of Edith Finch kind of combines those and even beats them both in terms of uh, atmospheric design and map design. Uh, sounds dope. Has my interest for sure. Uh, I feel like there has to be a point to the horrible nature and the design of these large man boss things. I either represent people in the kid's life or what they fear. This being said, I know almost nothing about this game. I don't either. Um, you know, it's it's possible that, that there will be some kind of metaphorical meaning by the end of it. But I don't see a whole lot of hints to that to that uh, to that effect. To me it just seems like they picked some they picked a cool a cool but disturbing setting. They realized it very well. They picked cool but disturbing enemies. Realized it very well. Uh, kind of felt the same way about Inside. So Sutton, I liked the game, and in the end I was like, so what's the point? It just didn't make me feel anything, aside from the initial com confusion and surprise. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, yeah, Sutton, I think I think we're the same. That being said, I still enjoyed it. Same here. I tried really hard to justify the weird ending, but it didn't give me any satisfaction. The true ending was just a statement of the control and free will. Didn't really do anything for the story. Yeah, uh, oh, Barky Narnar, you leaving? All right, see ya. So, for me, um, the best theory I had about Inside, sort of related to the, like, mind control helmets and stuff, the idea that, I think it was, again, this is being super generous to the game, but my theory was they were, they were sort of making an analogy between, between that and you controlling this person that even though in the confines of the game narrative this person is the original there are moments where you strap on a helmet and control other things exactly like that so you as the game player are also doing that you're putting on your helmet and you're controlling the the, the character in the game and it seemed to me that the point of the ending was to get outside to escape control 
to like get to the point where the game ends and they're no longer under your your slavery, I guess. There's probably something I could cook up to sort of justify the giant ball of flesh and feet that you become. Uh, I don't know. Something about the hybridizing of multiple people and control points and their free wills. I, I don't know. Someone tell me when he's done talking about it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, the true ending thing where you go into the, the basement and you see all that, like, all that stuff in there. Yeah. Expect that to stay open. <laughs> Inside this pussy boy. Kyle, you do know how to woo. Woo the gentleman. About homestuck ending? I ruined your joke. I did. Whatever, it's mine now. You said it in my chat, therefore it's my joke. That's what happens. That's what happens. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with this door. Go here. Is the world rocking slightly? Yes it is. Looker man, you are on a boat in this game. Huh. Maybe I missed a collectible or something? Wait. Oh, boy. Alright. So, I still don't have the uh, the key, so I'm hoping that... Get in there. Oh! Sorry, Kala. Well, no, I assume that if you're mad, you're mad at me. Which... Could be uh, a little bit... Could be a little bit presumptive. Uh, so this game was about going right. What is this left nonsense here? You're right. They're they're totally fucking it up. I'm in a loop now. Uh, Sean Shanzi says, any thoughts on the Tail series? Basaria is on sale. Never played any Tales games. I think it, if you if you have an appetite for JRPGs, you will be in heaven. And if you don't, oh god, it's a testicle. If you don't, then you might not care. I think the Tales games are very good at what they are. But they are exactly what they are. So yeah, if you want a JRPG, you're good. Oh shit! But if you don't like JRPGs, you not be good. There, I summarized it. I they're also crazy long, um, which is either a good or a bad thing, depending on what you're looking for. I've only finished one Tales game in my life, and my save file was like 85 hours for just like a normal playthrough. Normal playthrough type ending. Uh, why did you want me up here? Can't climb there. Can I jump around? Like, oh, dead. No? Okay. You want me to jump on the bed? I guess I can pull the... No, can't pull the light cord. Oh, there's a key there. Ha. I'm a genius. I'm a goddamn genius. But yeah, Symphony is great. Uh, I got like 30 hours into Vesperia and just sort of put it down. Uh, but I really enjoyed what I played of it. I haven't played Berseria much. Post-apocalyptic would be a good word. Term free three. Strat Rat, yeah. So I tried to, like... I I did have last year some terms that were, like... Here's something queued into this... Like, this time in gaming. So, like, reboot. Um, VR. Things like that. Uh, I really like that sort of stuff. Stuff that sort of acknowledges the current trends in gaming and mocks them. To be frank, though, there aren't that many trends right now. Which is good. Um, I mean, just think about the last few big releases. They've been all over the map. You've got Prey, which is, you know, horror, sci-fi, first-person RPG action, like everything, basically. Uh, Legend of Zelda, high fantasy. Um, Persona 5, which is like a core-ass nerd, nerd weeaboo JRPG. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is like a weird fantasy sci-fi mix. Remaster is a thing. Um, yeah. HD HD remaking old old properties. Open world, yeah, there are there. Are, yeah, you're right about that, Ethan. I think there are a glut of open world games, but even that, I think, is starting to taper. Yeah, Karen, Karen, you're right. JRPGs are kind of long just by design or by uh, by definition. I guess RPGs are always expected to be long, right? 
Hollow Knight. Yes, I need to play that, actually. Oh, tower climbing? That's mostly just a Ubisoft thing, but yeah, that is another trend, for sure. Is weeaboo a an American or Japanese term? I always, I always knew it to be American. I can tell you for goddamn sure I've never heard a Japanese person say weeaboo. That doesn't mean that they haven't. Whoop! Fuck. Well... The UE4 Atlas game has crashed. Fatal error. I wish open world games didn't have the big as an ocean, deep as a pond trouble, but what you gonna do? Well, yeah, Ops. Uh, for them not to, you're, you're basically requiring somebody to like develop develop a big-ass game and make it meaningful. That's hard. That's, it's much easier to do the Ubisoft formula of, like, we have we have our assets... Let's just let's just like take a pepper grinder and sprinkle some side quests all over it, tie it all together with some somewhat meaningless currency system, and then boom, there you go. You can get you can buy a black cape, and it's got a stat point that makes you run a little faster, so, something. You can reverse justify a lot of that stuff. What I've loved lately is stuff like Prey and Final Fantasy XV and Breath of the Wild have a a load of just interconnected systems that all play together very nicely. To me, that's the that's the big appeal of open world. I think an open world is meaningful when you can set an set an objective or like a, a short term goal for yourself, and along the way, just the world's vibrance will distract you or make you invent new newer short term goals. Who played the Gladiolus expansion for fifteen Bulldogs? I have not. Um, I need to, and I got to get back in there. There's still a lot of end game stuff I gotta I gotta address. Gotta beat that Adamantoys. Shit, do I have to do this whole loop? I don't have the key. Maybe the elevator's open. Okay, well, that's something. Know what I miss? Rail shooters? Yeah. I get why those games aren't made anymore. I mean, to be frank, there's a ton of them on Steam. So, there's still there's people out there making them. They're just all, like, Toho anime... Weeaboo shit. Um, Res Infinite came out. Uh... Until Dawn Rush of Blood. PlayStation VR had a couple. And they were all good. Um, I thought they were good. VR would be amazing for rail shooters? Yeah! That's what people are using it for. They, uh, yeah. So yeah, if, I mean, if you liked rail shooters... Until Dawn Rush of Blood was fucking legitimate. Um, as someone who's sort of a... erstwhile rail shooter fan. Yeah, I haven't played Rock Band VR yet. I need to, I need to fuck with that. Uh... Gray says, I would really do episode Gladio because they added some additional story stuff for chapter 13 and 15, and episode Prompto is coming out next month, but I really loved episode Gladio. Plus, as a reward for a score challenge, you can get shirtless Gladio. Whoop! Half-Life 2 is getting remastered by a small studio for VR. Matt, I thought Valve already did that. Maybe not remastered, but Valve certainly had... You can open up the console and turn it into VR mode. Regarding the amazing lighting in your cam, I kind of need you to talk like an edgelord. It's only fitting. Morgan Farts, I'm not in character right now. I'm sorry. You only get default me. Uh, boring all with my with my diatribes about about uh, in, inside. Message Dan Walsh at Harmonix. We'll hook you up. Oh, that's right, Fisher. I forget you work at Harmonix. Uh, how would I do that? By the way, Fisher, uh, I'm I bought Rivals a long time ago, and never played it. So I think this weekend I'm gonna do a really long stream of just playing through Rivals, put on like a tank top and just fucking drum my heart out. I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, you were telling me the the Rivals kit has a new drum, right? Is it still the only way to get that? Is to just buy Rivals? I might do it. I uh, cause yeah, my my red pad is a little touchy, and that's like. One of the most important ones, so cool. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm an edgelord talking about free will. Uh, but I, uh, there's also that, I also want to get the pro kit, uh, the symbols, so. I never, I never, like, got really good with expert pro drums, but I really enjoyed it, man. The Rivals band in a box is the only way to snag the new drums. Okay, 
Oh, I might just I'll just pick that up then. I God has graced me with a life a life of plenty that I can buy a new drum kit if I if I need to or want to. Alright, is it gonna crash again? Same setup? No, we good. Alright. Killer 7 was a GameCube game. Yeah, but they, they ported it to PS2, I thought. Shit, man, if I, I guess if I order it now, it'll be here in time. I can get the kit and then the... Oh, fuck off. Get the kit and the symbols. There's no new, like, s pro drum kit, is there? It's just, uh... Huh. Killer is Dead is a spiritual sequel to Killer 7. It really does look like it, doesn't it? What's weird is because I love I loved Killer 7 to death, but I never played Killer is Dead. I need to. This is the only one of you who can play an instrument, barring at least his Ocarina of Prowess. No, no, I I have in the past played many instruments, but it's been a long time. Um, I was in a I was in an American folk music band with my dad. The symbols are all the same. Okay. Good to know. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't like missing out on anything. Um but yes, in this American folk music band I played bass, bass guitar, cello, mandolin, and guitar. Rhythm acoustic guitar. Not, it's not gonna cut it. So do I have to grind up a sausage rope long enough to climb? Is that what's going on here? You think Shenmue 3 is cancelled? No. I'm confident it's being worked on. I just think it's... Japanese developers, they develop at a different pace. I think American developers are a lot more sort of like... business minded. Uh, or rather... Why do I have black stuff on me? It seems to me that Japanese developers are more willing to take their time to realize their vision of what they want to make. And they're they're willing to like endure the cost of that. It's just assumed. Why would we release a game before it's ready to be released? Before it's re realized the potential? It, yes, of course we'll pay the money. That's what we have to do. So I don't know. Do you know or can say if Funhouse I'll be going to conventions other than RTX this summer slash fall? Won't be able to go to RTX this year and I need my fix. Um, we're sending some people to PAX. PAX Prime. I don't know who. Um, I think I'm going to VidCon. Um, to, like, uh, I think do a panel and, like, do a signing or something. So, I don't know. What comes out first? Shenmue 3 or Kingdom Hearts 3? Oof! Man! Man, what a question! Right, Kala? Shen Shenmue 2 gave me giant blue balls as well. It was like just getting really spicy right at the end. When you do that long walk up the mountain session with that... With that, like, very pastoral Chinese girl. And you discover your fucking spirit matrix. That was awesome! And that sequence where you're with that super awesome bro. Running through that tenement in China. That was super cool! Yeah, Horatio. Vicon is where I swore at the children. As far as which will come out first, I'm gonna say Kingdom Hearts 3. They've got such a, such a leap on that. So, is it better to watch Funhouse vids on YouTube or on the Rooster Teeth website? Truly, truly whatever's more convenient for you. Um, if you have a first membership, I'd say the website because you get everything earlier and some bonus content. But, uh... Oh, man. Um, Any chance to get a convention in Bump, Bump Huck, Montana, where I live? Odds are low, I'm sorry. And before I sound too callous, believe me, I feel the sting of growing up in a town where nothing happens. It won't be like that forever. I promise you that. Oh, that's a little dead gnome guy. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, bumfuck. Okay, I thought it was a real town. Oh, okay, so that's... That's how I... Drop stuff. That's the door. this open? No, I think I got in there anyway. Waiting on that Kingdom Hearts 3 cum shot. Goodness. Well, I guess we'll keep waiting. It's not coming out fiscal year 2017. Square announced their titles at an investor call and Kingdom Hearts was not in there. So that's cool. Also means it's Almost definitely not at E3 this year. That's another cool thing. 
The thing I noticed about Japanese developers is that they pick up on the gaming trends years later than anyone else, but they always do it right. Example, they picked up on open world games pretty late, but then we got Metal Gear Solid 5 and Breath of the Wild. Eh, yeah, Karen, uh, I think, I think, that's accurate. I, I would say, you know, don't forget that Japanese developers invented open world games with The Legend of Zelda. So, I, I would agree that they don't follow trends, almost as a, a, almost as a statement. They almost go out of their way to not follow trends, which can be a problem sometimes. Uh, sometimes there are really good ideas that are trendy, and they ignore them seemingly out of spite. Um, seems like the, the vibe I get, the core of it seems to be, and this is this is unspoken, but the core of it seems to be, uh, we will make our game in a vacuum, so our game is as pure to our artistic, like, as, as pure to our motivations as it can possibly be. So we will not... We will pretend as though we hadn't we haven't seen all these other games. Because we want to invent our solutions to these problems. They may not be the best, but at least they'll be unique. Is the vibe I get. So I don't know. Alright, oh, I gotta pull it down first. Got a chunk of meat, chunk of meat up. Let's grind that meat. Lots of Metal Gear Solid 5, curious to my opinion. Uh I need to play that game more, is my opinion. Um I really, really liked what I played of it. And I'm up to, like, I think, like, Mission in the Teens or something? I really didn't spend much time there. Not as much as I should have, but... it It's another game that did open world very right. It was a, a big, moving, moving world. You can sort of bend it to your will, but... Also just sort of figure out how to work inside of it. Uh, it was really smart. This level feels familiar. Okay, so... Probably gotta grind up that... That dude. Can I make this jump? Oh. Okay. Can I jump from there to the top of the... Uh -huh. can't, can't climb on that, I don't think. Can I climb on those bodies? No? The hook with the meat. Alright. I'll go check it out, Wicker Man. Try not to, uh, in the future, try not to, to tell me solutions to things. I kind of like figuring stuff out. Uncharted, yeah or nay? Like, what, all of it? Yeah, Uncharted's awesome. There we go. Yeah, beginning half was pretty great. Second half was a lot of repeat missions. Shame. Yeah, that's what I hear from a lot of people. Or rather, just like reading forums and stuff like that. Seems like there was a brilliant game there, but they didn't have enough time to, like, make it 100% brilliant. Which is crazy, because that game was in development for fucking ever. So, it's so, it's so easy to villainize Konami in that, but shit, man. That game was in development forever, with a dev staff of hundreds. That shit's expensive. That's the sort of thing where if you spend that much time making a game, it better sell like GTA 5. And if it doesn't sell like GTA 5, fuck. And I... Ugh. I don't think Metal Gear Solid 5 sold enough to justify it. Same with, like, Bioshock Infinite was another one of those games where... You had how big of a staff for how long? And you sold 4 million units? Okay. Like, I don't... It makes me wonder. Because, like, there's that whole, whole deal with Ken... Ken Levine sort of... Basically laying off his entire company. And I wonder if, if that was, like... They they had a hard talk with Ken at some point. They being 2K. And they're like, Ken, you're a fucking... You're an artist, I get it. You've made some of the greatest games. Fine. Motherfucker, you are 30 million in the hole. And this shit has got to go out. It's got to go out. Because we have got to recoup some of this. <laughs> you're, you can't run your studio. I'm pretty sure they just said, like, if your game sells less than 8 million units, your studio is done. Or something like that. Something like that. Maybe it wasn't that, um... I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that blunt. But Telling him to make Bioshock 4? I don't know, man. Games like Prey come out, and I, I suddenly give a lot less of a shit. You know? Um... Other games can scratch an itch. I felt like, uh... Before Wolfenstein came out, I was like, Man, Half-Life 3 would be great. And then Wolfenstein came out, and I was like, Oh! Cool, they did it. They made the game that I wanted. 
That's that's how I feel about Prey with a lot of stuff right now. That game is what I wanted in a lot of ways. The, it was like, it was the game that uh, Human Revolution wasn't quite, or Mankind Divided, sorry. Human Revolution was a little closer, Mankind Divided a little further away. Um, but, like, I, I'm, to I'm cool. I'm totally cool. I don't really need a Bioshock 4. That game was better than Bioshock 4 probably would have been. God, another key, huh? Oh yeah, I need to do that BDSM test. What do I think about politics? All of it? I'm okay with it, I guess. Oh, fuck. Here's a... Shit! He's got me, he's got me, yeah. He's just gonna hug me to death. Here's an, here's an unpopular point of view about politics in general. I think politics are necessary. I think that in the modern world you can't get away with everybody doing their own thing. And yeah, it, there's going to be some overhead. And yes, there's going to be some bureaucracy. And that's just how it goes. Ah, shit. Eh. Climb in there. There we go. I really do like how much of this game is, like, hiding and waiting for the horror to pass. Because Elise referenced that on the podcast, how the game felt very much like being a kid and climbing into bed and covering yourself up with the covers. I like that. Who is the person who usually posts hentai? That's Cookie Cutter. And why aren't they here posting hentai? I don't know. Maybe he's got some stuff to do. You like the game too? It's called Perception? Yes. I, uh... No, I, I've, uh, I've, I've taken a look at Perception. I'm, uh... It looks really interesting. Come on, come on, come on, you. Do the test on stream. Wink. Nah. It's between me, my girlfriend, and my incognito tab. Let's see here. Why is... Zematic asks, Why is that some games, when they release, take the world by storm? Everyone loves it, but then a few years' opinion is a massive 180. For example, Bioshock Infinite, a game loved when released... I always mention it in a negative way. I was negative on it when it came out. Um, I think I think Bioshock Infinite was a huge hype hype thing, and it had a lot in it that was very flashy. Uh, Columbia looks amazing. Uh, Elizabeth as a partner was pretty cool. It was kind of like Alex 2.0. Uh, so there's a lot to be charmed with it, but I think the combat design was not as tight. Certainly, I, I don't. I think the the plot. The narrative had some serious problems uh, leading up to the end. Um, so, I think over time people start to figure that stuff out once the uh, the glitz sort of wears off of a fresh release. Damn, American Hellfire, thank you. 16 months, damn. How long have your, you and your girlfriend been steady? Legend of Squanta. Squanto, sorry. We've been dating for three years now. You all watch hentai together. It has happened, but not regularly. The ending was so mind-blowing, though. Sort of. Do you remember the ending? That whole segment where, where like, Elizabeth is a god, and it's, like, this weird, incongruous stealth with the weird little, like, screamy head guys. Well, that was just kind of... That was just kind of there. Didn't really add anything... She likes to get stuck. Oh boy, you were real stuck, huh? Fuck. Nope. Still stuck. Yeah, there's there's some shit going on on the screen stuff. You, you okay? Stephanie's sick. Oh, water? I can get you water. Here, sit down. Here guys, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna get Stephanie some water. You know what? Actually, I've been streaming for a while. I think... No. I'll be right back.
The music in the field scenes, which is where the character walks around, has a unique flavor that no other RPGs had in the past. We intentionally eliminated the up-tempo, inspiring, rousing type of feel, meant to encourage you to embark on a journey that usual RPGs had. Instead, some parts of the music will rise melodiously, some parts will make you feel insecure, therefore creating various expressions within the same field of music. I assume players will get a different feel from it compared to previous RPGs. To tell the truth, I hope so, since this is my own experiment. I have been working with him since Final Fantasy V. When he joined Square, he told me he initially wanted to become a film director, but that he thought this would be impossible in Japan. The previous versions of Final Fantasy could be called puppet shows compared to this one. It's a real film requiring innovative effects and various camera angles. His experience studying cinematography and making his own films has contributed a lot to the making of the game. He is the director of this game. Well, uh, I am still stuck in this game, so I'd be bouncing back to a checkpoint even if, uh, even if I were going to keep going. I'd just be replaying a lot of stuff and then back to where I am. So I'm just going to call it there, I think. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Uh, drum some this weekend. It's going to feel good. All right, see you guys then. fascination and the technology of computer games on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week is Paul Schindler. And Paul, we're playing the original video game. This is Pong in its first commercial version called Odyssey. And this goes back 14 years. And this was what a, what a video game console used to look like. Uh, these are what the cartridges here used to look like. They weren't very complicated. Uh, this was the old controller. Uh, if you help me, though, uh, we're going to jump ahead 14 years. And, of course, this is Super Mario on Nintendo. Video games have changed quite a bit, obviously. The question when we talk about computer games and video games, I think for parents, Paul, is their concern that kids are addicted to this. What is your view? Is this a bad thing for kids to be playing this, or is there a good side to it? I think there's a little of both, Stuart. I think, like all good things, video games should be taken in moderation. I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and I strictly limit their daily game playing time. Now, we don't happen to have a video game system, so they play games on the PC and on the Macintosh. That happens to be my preference because I think it builds familiarity with the way the system operates and with the keyboard. However, this isn't to say that I think video game systems are necessarily bad because you're still working at the human-machine interface, uh -huh. developing comfort, and some people even say developing reflexes. Right. 